Hi everybody. It will be four weeks since my surgery tomorrow and as promised I'm going to show you where my stimulator was placed and all the components and how they work. Now for my particular migraines they um, predominantly were on the left side behind the eye. Um, after speaking with the neurosurgeon at my first visit, um, he decided, along with myself, that it will be best to cover both sides because after um, going through the trial, um, which only covered the left, the migraines shifted to the right. So to cover my bases, I said, let's do both sides, and we did. Usually a lot of people get a forward lead system where they have one over each super orbital nerve and one on each occipital nerve in the back of the skull towards the base. Now I rarely get migraines there. Um, sometimes during really severe migraines I will feel the pain in the occipital area but that is a reaction to the migraine that I'm feeling in the front. So. We didn't need to cover that area, so we just did a two-lead system um, over each nerve. So I have one over the left, one over the right. He made an incision right here, which you can kind of see, and did a tunnel with the needle to put both the wires and the leads on this one side, so I didn't have two incisions um, on either side. See my hair was shaved and the wires are going along this way over towards the along the back of my head. Another incision is over here where it's um, anchored really well and the wires are coming along this side. You can kind of see looks a little bit like a vein. It's coming down here to the stimulator which is right here. You can kind of see it poking out. And of course this is the incision where it was uh, put in. This is a bra strap incision so it's like a plastic surgery type of incision which can be covered up by my bra or a tank top or shirt so you really can't see it. So to turn on my stimulator I have this programmer. Now my system is through Medtronic and I have the adaptive stem uh, stimulator put in. Now with this particular model, depending on what reason you're getting it put in, the adaptive stem program can be um, programmed into it to where it will automatically adjust the stimulation depending on what position you're in. Um, I believe that's done with a lot of people who have chronic back pain or chronic leg pain. So what it does is, depending on whether you're laying flat on your back, on your stomach, on your right side, your left side, if you're upright, if you're sitting, if you're mobile, it adjusts accordingly. Because a lot of times, depending on what position you're in, you might need to um, change the level of your stimulation. You might need to make it stronger. You might need to bring it down some. So it does that automatically, which is pretty cool. And Medtronic is the only company that offers that option as far as um, neurostimulators go. So back to the programmer. There's the screen. This is the power button here. These are the buttons that I use to adjust the stimulation to make it higher or lower. This one makes it lower. This one brings it up. On the side, this black button is the sync button. This is what I have to push when I want to turn it on. This here is the stimulator um, off button. So if I want to turn off my neurostimulator, I'll press this button here. And to turn on the neurostimulator, it's this top button. So right now it's turned off. So to turn it on, I will place it directly over my neurostimulator and push the black button. That black button is the sync button that communicates with the stimulator. Now on the screen, this image right here shows that the neural stimulator is on. The image in the middle is the battery um, level of the neural stimulator 
and this one here is the battery level of the uh, programmer. This here with the check mark and the B, I have two groups. I have an A group and a B group. So if I go back, I can choose whichever group I want. Right now it was, it's on the B, the B group is selected. So you can have different programs, multiple programs put in, depending on um, the types of stimulation that you need. And on the bottom, here you see, this is um, the first program of group B. This one is for the left side. So this is for the lead on the left. So if I only have paint on the left, I can adjust this one and have the one on the um, right turned off. Two is for the lead on the right, so I can adjust that one as well. And this is for the actual um, level of stimulation if I want it to be stronger or less. So during just really mild um, headaches or migraines, I have it about 60%. But if it's a severe migraine, I can turn it up to 100%. Um, so it gives me a stronger, quicker pulse, you can say. Okay. So that's how you turn it on. Let me go back. Okay, so if I want to adjust my left side, I will place it over the stem and press the plus button. Now, um, my representative has a program to go up in um, increments of 0.5, so it gives me more control over how much I want to feel it and um, those kinds of things. So the more I turn it up, the more I feel the tingling sensation over here. And the more I turn it up, I start to feel it more going into the scalp. And if I want to adjust the right side, I do the same. I turn it up. And right now all I feel is tingling. It's like having like little tiny hands massaging the nerves under your skin. It's a pretty cool feeling. It's very comfortable. The only time it gets uncomfortable is if it's turned up too high. Um, and sometimes your change in position or movement can actually increase the stimulation so you just adjust it accordingly now when I go out when I travel I have a pouch that I put it in keeps it safe it protects it and it has a strap where I can put it onto you know my belt or my pants or whatever I'm wearing if a wearing a, a dress or something, I'll just keep it in my purse, but this keeps it really handy. I do not have it turned on while I drive. Um, it's a safety precaution. Um, anything can happen. You don't want something to go wrong with your stimulation while you're driving and cause you to um, be involved in an accident or anything. So I have it turned off and I only turn it on when I really need it. If I'm in the store and I feel um, like the fluorescent lights are starting to bother me. Um, then I'll turn it on and then I can continue my shopping and um, not be uh, disrupted by pain and everything that comes along with it. All right, so how do I charge this stimulator inside my chest? Well, it has a really good battery life. It's about two weeks, depending on how often that you have it on, how frequently. I usually have mine on all day with the exception of um, driving. Um, but I find so far I only charge it about once every two weeks and once I see one of the bars go down, that's when I charge it just to keep it fully charged. But the lifetime um, of this battery is nine years, so it's really excellent. So. The charger comes in a in a carry case like so. So it's really convenient and easy to travel with. This is the charger. It has a plug that you um, plug into the wall and they suggest that you keep the plug already plugged in into a a location where you can always go to so by my nightstand I have that plugged in 
So right now it's turned on. If you could see me on the plug, you could see it better. But this shows the battery life of the charger. So you can have it plugged up while you charge your neurostimulator. So it'll charge the pack and your stimulator at the same time, or you can have it disconnected if you have a full charge, which I do right now. So the other piece that comes with the charger is this belt. Now this is used for people who have the stimulator implanted either in the back or in the abdomen. So you would place this part over the stimulator and you know hook it up around your waist. So if mine was in my abdomen or in my back I would have um, the belt on but I don't. So in order to keep this part which is the antenna which snaps into this piece here I have double-sided tape and then give you a whole pack of them this is it right here and it's a sticker basically double-sided and you just peel it off you peel it off like so and you place it on this piece on the back so I'm going to place that on there and then remove the other side of the paper to expose the other side of the tape okay so that's the sticker on the back so when I'm ready to charge I just stick it right over the stimulator and then I push the green button and the charger is communicating with the neurostimulator. Okay, so it communicated and it's letting me know um, how good my signal is with the antenna. See right now it's all the bars on the bottom aren't lit up. So if I want to get a better connection, I can adjust it by turning the dial. And Usually that brings the power up on the uh, antenna bar. If not, I could adjust it some more. Now, you see this symbol here that shows that it's charging the stimulator. When it's done, it'll beep and let me know. So I can go along and do other things while it's charging. This also has a pouch that it's in with a strap that you can connect to your um, belt or your pants so you can walk around with it so you're not hindered or stuck in one spot to charge it so it's um, very travel friendly so right now I just leave it on and let it charge it's a very simple system to use at first it might seem a bit overwhelming because there's a lot of pieces and they're big but it's very self-explanatory and it's the most easiest thing to use. Um, you get a DVD, of course, that goes through um, all the steps and how to charge and how to use your program and whatnot. But once you start using it, it's just it's a no-brainer. It's very simple. It is not something that anyone has to worry about not figuring out how to use. And I must say that um, in deciding to get the stimulator, I you know, knew that it wasn't going to be a cure. There is no cure. I knew I would still have pain. And I was expecting um, to get at least 60 to 70 percent pain relief. I was surprised when my relief was at 98 percent. My chronic daily headache is gone and the frequency of migraine attacks have gone down from three a week to about one to two every two weeks. And this is just in a matter of four weeks. It's amazing. And um, my only obstacle is changing my thinking because I still have a migraine brain and I think that way. So I still expect certain activities or foods or um, 
other circumstances to trigger migraines. I still get them. I still my triggers don't change. None of that changes. Right now it's thundering outside. We just had a thunderstorm. With this turned off, I would have a migraine probably about a seven or eight right now. Um, but with it on, I can function. I can go through my day. And when I do have a severe migraine, instead of it being at a ten for hours, I can bring it down to about a seven which is tolerable for me. I can function, I can fall asleep easier. Um, and I take that over having 10, three times a week. So it's a, you know, a little compromise, but it's a hell of a lot better than the life I was living before. And I truly hope that my information regarding um, this procedure and this option as a treatment really helps to enlighten people. I know that this information isn't readily available and it's not something that's being um, discussed in many physicians' offices. And many of us, like, like me at first, just had neurologists and they're the general practitioner of neurology. They are not migraine specialists. So um, the information and the treatment options that they offer are limited and most of the time we're just handed a new prescription every three months when the previous one stopped working and that's something that you, re you get really tired of um, and it's a very um, diligent type of work to get the treatment that you feel you deserve this didn't come easy I had to fight my insurance company for three months the appeal process took before I can get them to um, approve a surgeon that will um, put the implant in. So it's a frustrating journey to be on, but the reward is so great when you fight for what you deserve. And unfortunately, many of us have to go through a lot of battles just to get relief, and it shouldn't be that way, but you have to be your own advocate. It starts with you. And because there's so much stigma around migraine and not a lot of education out there um, about it and other headache disorders, you know, the onus falls on us first. So if this is something you really, really want to try and you've exhausted all other options, don't be intimidated by any doctor that is hesitant about it. It's your decision. You know what's right for you and it's your body. So. If you happen to see a pain management specialist, a physicist, a migraine specialist, um, or a neurosurgeon that offers neurostimulators in their office for other types of chronic pain, mention it, bring it up, say, hey, I've seen this um, used on other migraine patients and they've had good success with it and I want to try this as an option. Go through a trial. Either it's going to work for you or it's not, but at least you'll have, you know, the knowledge of whether or not this is something that will work for you. I'll continue to keep you updated on how it's working. Um, I really do hope that this will continue to um, allow me to have a life that I haven't had in many years. So that's it on my stimulator, and I will catch up with you guys soon and look forward to more information, and I hope to bring you know awareness and um, more options to to those of you who uh, follow me so good luck with everybody out there who's still trying to find a treatment don't give up I know the battle is long and hard but you got to keep fighting because you're worth it all right good night everybody